Welcome to this demonstration of creating an ADAE dataset with the Admiral package. If you need more time to read a slide, make use of the pause button. If you want to jump to a different slide, use the video progression slider. In this demo, we will find the Admiral package on GitHub and see some useful information about the package. We will take a look at the available documentation and focus on a specific article about creating an OCCDS Atom dataset. We will follow the example provided in that article to create an ADAE dataset from the AE and ADSL datasets. And finally, we will wrap it up with a summary and provide some useful links. To begin, what is the Admiral package? What does it do? Let's take a look at the GitHub website. If we go to github.com slash pharmaverse slash Admiral, the GitHub repository contains everything related to Admiral all of the code, including past and development versions, is here. All of the issues listing possible bugs and enhancements are here. The README is lower down on this page, and it has a lot of information for both users and developers. The purpose explains what Admiral is all about, to provide an open source modularized toolbox that enables the pharmaceutical programming community to develop Atom datasets in R. For this demo, we are interested in the documentation. The link can be found at the top of this page, pharmaverse.github.io slash admiral. Let's take a look at pharmaverse.github.io slash admiral. There is a considerable amount of documentation available. On the home page, there is information about the purpose of the package, how to install it, the main goal of the package, etc. All of this is worthwhile to review when you get a chance. Under Get Started, there's general information on how Admiral can be used and an example of how to create a very simple ADSL dataset. The example steps through how to load packages and example data, derive treatment variables, derive date and flag variables, etc. There's important information about input and output datasets the handling of missing values and validation. The section starting a script shows how to determine what templates are available to you for starting a program to create an Atom dataset by making use of the use AD template function. We can specify a specific template to use. Under reference, there is documentation on all the Admiral functions. For example, if we look at the documentation for the derived VARS DTM function, we can see an explanation of what it does, its parameters, and examples for use. We will now take a look at an article on how to create an OCCDS Atom dataset. The example in this article shows how to create an ADAE dataset, and we will be following those instructions. Under Articles, we select Creating an OCCDS Atom. This article walks through creating OCCDS datasets, that is, datasets such as ADAE, ADCM, ADMH, etc. 
For this demo, we will concentrate on ADAE and will not reproduce every step in the article, but rather cover enough steps so that the general concept is understood. Looking at the programming workflow, we can see the steps we might take to create ADAE. For this example, we load the libraries that we need and set up our example data from admiral.test. We then begin creating our ADAE dataset by making use of admiral functions and merge the AE data with the ADSL fields needed for derivations, derive start and end analysis date times and relative day, Note that we make use of admiral functions such as derive vars DTM, the documentation of which we looked at earlier. Derive durations by making use of the derive vars duration function. Derive planned and actual treatment. The admiral package does not have functionality to assist with this. We will need to do this with study specific code and we will do additional derivations. Let's follow the instructions in the article to create an example ADAE dataset. Before we begin, we will need to install the Admiral package, and we also need to install the package admiral.test, which contains the test data that we will be using. We can see that the packages are not installed. We will install them from CRAN. This will take a few seconds. We can see that the packages are now installed. We will now begin recreating the examples shown in the article. To start, we want to read in the data. We copy the code from the example so we can paste and run it in our studio. We create a new file and paste the copied code. This code will load the libraries needed and assign the data we will be using. We then run the code and can see that we now have the data we will be using in data frames called AE and ADSL. Going back to the article, we see that our next step will be to select some ADSL variables, which we will use for derivations, and add them to the AE variables in order to create our initial ADAE dataset. Once again, we copy the code from the example so we can paste and run it in our studio. We paste the code copied from the article. This code identifies which variables we would like to take from ADSL and we merge these with the AE data and create our initial ADAE dataset. Note that we are using a function called derive vars merged. We can place the cursor within that part of the code and select F1 in order to see documentation about the function. This is the same documentation we would see in the references web page, but it is convenient to see it here without leaving our studio. We can see what the function is used for, its arguments, and some examples. We then run the code.
and you can see that we now have a data frame named ADAE. We can view it and see that it contains the AE variables and the ADSL variables we specified we wanted merged. These variables have been added to the right of the AE columns. We now return to the article. Note that after the code we just copied and ran, there is a display of what the expected data frame should look like. We can see the ADSL variables which have been added to the AE data. This is helpful when walking through the code in the article in that you can check if you are getting the same results. Note that the display data is only showing a subset of the variables. If you want to see more, you will need to make use of the button labeled Choose the Columns to Display. Our next step will be to derive the start and end analysis date times and derive the relative days. There is some information about this and the functions which will be used. Once again, we copy the code from the example so we can paste and run it in our studio. We can take a quick look at what the expected result should be. We paste and run the code copied from the article. We can take a look at the latest version of our ADAE data frame. Note that the end day is not showing. This is due to the number of columns our studio is displaying. We can ask for additional columns to be displayed. I can now see the end day. Once again, we return to the article. Our next step will be to derive durations. We will make use of the derive vars duration function to derive the analysis duration, ADURN, and the analysis duration unit, ADURU. Taking a quick look at the expected results, we see the analysis duration unit is days. The first and second records have the analysis duration as missing due to the missing end date, while the third record has the analysis duration as 3. We copy the code from the example so we can paste and run it in our studio. We paste and run the code copied from the article. We then view the latest version of our ADAE data frame. We will need to look further to the right with the columns. As expected, the analysis duration unit is days and the analysis duration is missing for the first two records and is three for the third record. Returning to the article, there's a section on deriving ATC variables. The example is related to ADCM and we will skip over it for this demo. In the section on deriving planned and actual treatment. We are told that Admiral does not currently have functionality to assist with treat A and treat P assignment. This is something we will need to do ourselves. One possibility is suggested here. 
assign ADSL.treat01P and ADSL.treat01A to treat P and treat A respectively. We added ADSL.treat01P and ADSL.treat01A in an earlier step. We copy the code from this example so we can paste it and run it in our studio. We paste and run code copied from the article. This will derive the plant in actual treatment and there is code to allow us to check on our assignment. For the rest of the example, I will not continue copying code and running it in our studio. Instead, we will just continue walking through the article. The next section of the article shows an example of using the function name derive var last dose date in order to derive the date or date time of the last dose before the start of the event. There is mention of an argument named traceability vars for deriving traceability variables such as LDOS DOM and LDOS SEQ. Note that this argument is not shown in this particular example, but we can find out more about it by following the function link. The next section of the article has a simple example of deriving severity, causality, and toxicity grade by making use of the tidyverse mutate function. Following that, we see how we could use mutate to derive the treatment emergent flag. Next, there are three examples of how we could derive the on treatment flag with the admiral function derive var on treat FL. The next section of the article shows how the function named derive var extreme flag can be used to derive occurrence flags such as the first occurrence of maximum toxicity grade or the first occurrence of most severe adverse event. The next section of the article covers the derivation of query variables. These can be standardized MEDRA queries, SMQs for ADAE, or standardized drug groupings, SDGs for ADCM. This first requires the creation of a queries data set with the content and structure expected by the derive vars query function. This will all be covered in a separate demo. Finally, we can add all of the ADSL variables, which were not added in our earlier step. We have been walking through the example in the article to build an ADAE dataset. But this is just an introduction of how to accomplish this. In practice, when we want to create an ADAE dataset, we would make use of the template available to us. This will give us code which we can modify to suit our needs. We make use of the useADTemplate function, which was mentioned earlier. In this case, we want the ADAE template and we want to create an R program called test AD ADSL dot R. We can see that the template has some library statements. When working with our own data, we would not need to load admiral dot test, which contains the dummy data used in the example and we would want to read in our own data, perhaps with the read XPT function. 
As in the article, we can see code related to loading ADSL variables, which are required for derivations, and those variables being merged with the AE data. We also see example code for deriving the analysis start and end times and dates, the analysis duration, last dose, date and time, severity, etc. This code can be modified as needed. We have covered a fair amount in this demo. In this demo, we looked at information about the Admiral package on GitHub. We looked at the available documentation for the Admiral package to see what the Admiral package could provide us. We followed the example provided in the article called Creating an OCCDS Atom to create an ADAE dataset from the AE and ADSL datasets. And we saw how to pull in the ADAE template as a starting point in creating our own ADAE dataset. Everything about Admiral can be found at github.com slash pharmaverse slash Admiral. This includes code, issues, documentation, etc. The Admiral documentation can be found at pharmaverse.github.io slash Admiral. For questions and discussions about using Admiral, go to the Pharmaverse Slack workspace pharmaverse.slack.com and use the channel named Admiral. This completes this demonstration of creating an ADAE dataset with the Admiral package.